Следующая тема э, развивает предыдущую перформанс в институции и э, рассказывает о своем опыте Юрий Карпан, э, арт-директор и основатель э, галереи Капелица, галереи э, современного искусства в Любляне, э, которая, как и некоторые другие институции, например, в Москве, работает как галерея проектов, галерея исследовательских проектов. Пожалуйста. Well, uh, good afternoon to everybody. I'm sure you know uh, where the New York is, but I'm not sure if you know where Slovenia is. So I prepared a, a, a slide to show where is this tiny, tiny country where, for example, the Russia is not even on the plan. So to help you. Uh, while I'm not uh, um, so fluent in English, I will, I will read my text uh, and I'm apologizing for that. Uh, it will be super speedy because I have only 20 minutes and um, I completely re remake my presentation as I was here uh, yesterday and I thought that I have to give a little bit of uh, context um, to my speech. It was a year, uh, 1984, when the collective of several art groups formed Neue Slovenische Kunst Formation. But it was already in the year 1983 that Leibach Group, uh, after a few notorious concerts and exhibitions, uh, was formally forbidden by the Slovenian government. In the year 1987, when the multidisciplinary art collective hit the red button in the so-called poster affair, the graphic division, the graphic division uh, of the Neue Slovenische Kunst called uh, New Collectivism proposed a poster for the celebration of the Day of Youth, which appeared to be also the former President Tito's birthday. There was a figure of a young athletic man having the Yugoslavian flag in one hand and the mace in the other hand. The heroic figure seemed appropriate to symbolize the vitality of Yugoslavian youth. But already next day, an art historian deciphered the poster and recognized the inspiration of designers. The poster was a quote of Richard Klein poster for Nazis from 1936. The huge scandal shaked the whole country. At that time, we had no appropriate words to describe the provocation. However, the whole gener generation, including me, encountered the philosophical concept of over-identification for the first time. The Neue Slovenische Kunst Collective practiced it on several levels, occasions, and media. By mimicking symbols that resembled Nazistic iconography, we have learned that we are actually living in the country which is using their symbols on the same way. It was not swastika, but red star. The uniforms were everywhere. We had political systems that was totalitarian, but in different colors. I'm simplifying, of course, the discourse for the need of this short introduction, but you can find a huge amount of references online. Leibach appeared with Malevich cross on their sleeve. Painters group Irvin were using black Malevich square on their portraits. On their iconic paintings, the straight references to suprematism and constructivism were calling for a total art. Sampling, quoting, and collaging historic and symbols became structured under the concept of retrogardism. Mm, strong affection with Russian avant-garde movements, which were mainly advocated by the Irving Group and the theater of the sister of Scipion Nasice, made Russian avant-garde legacy very close, close to us. Not only NSK, uh, Moscow Embassy and the series of the debates about the role of art in postmodern society in Moscow apartments, but also the other, other artistic actions were made in collaboration with Victor Misiano, with Oleg Kulik and Alexander Brenner, to name only few. We, back there in Slovenia, were paying close attention to the scandalous exhibition Interpol in Sweden. 
We were present at the actions of Brenner and Kulik in Ljubljana. In the project, project called Transnationala, where a group of uh, non slovenian Kunst artists and theoreticians crossed the USA in a camper, Brenner conceptualized his intervention on Malevich painting in Stidic Museum, which is, according to my opinion, one of the most important art gestures, including Brenner's brilliant, brilliant uh, discourse defending his act at the court. Those years teach me, teach me that art can immen immensely influence society while the whole generation was able to understand and reflect the situation we were living in. The ruling political elite got the lecture about the power of over-identification, simply said it is by then that Slovenians got its portion of pussy riot. By the time I was finishing my studies on, of architecture and write, uh, while exhibiting my work in galleries, I was in close connections with the art community. When the opportunity to run a gallery space came from the site of student organization in Ljubljana, we did, I didn't hesitate much. Influenced by the turbulent 80s and reflecting the situation in newly declared independence of Slovenia, which became a sovereign state with its own political pantheon, I decided to sustain that artistic production which is in direct opposition to the totalitarian concept of state, which is typical for the post-democratic society of spectacle. Slovenia and, there, and also the other ex-Yugoslavian countries as well were too late to enjoy the decadence of late modernism, modern democracy and they fell into wild neoliberal dismemberment of national substance. When, the, when I conceptualized my curatorial path, I wanted to build a program in the gallery which would make people think and not entertain. I was looking for artworks that are deeply critical and political toward the attempts of domination of the ideologies toward the individual. In the mid-90s, the discourse of aesthetics became the exclusive domain of design, marketing, and, ele and electronic media. The centers of technolo technological development were also the centers of information domination. By rapid development of wearable technologies, individuals and society adopted total surrender by not understanding the degree of freedom they are lo losing. The relation human-machine is since then one of the central topics of interest in our gallery. Connectivity, telepresent, telepresence, responsive media, interactivity, cybernetics, bionics, privacy, etc. are fields of interest where the artists are entering with their artworks, pushing the limits of cohabitants. Who is controlling who? Are the humans who are controlling the machines or are the machines that are controlling humans? <clears throat> Artists are developing different strategies and tactical approaches to questioning those new, widely accepted values. They are developing elements, tools, and protocols that stem its origin from the field they are problematizing. Artists need to know how the technology functions if they would like to understand what are the mechanisms of domination embedded to avoid the statization of their work which would commod commodify the topic. It is different visual intelligence that needs to be deployed. At this point, I will, <clears throat> I will structure before, before mentioned human-machine relationship with other words. Machine are prosthetic interfaces which are reverse engineered from nature. The machines became the extensions of human capabilities, but they are dry. Dry if I'm using it in the opposition of wet, alive, human, animal, plant, and combinations of all those. I would like to, to take you on the path of Aristotelian dichotomy, zoe, and bios, and pull under the question the conception of the humanism as it was conceived in 18th century and <clears throat> to the full up of biopolitics, of the concept of biopolitics. I have teased you now with uh, that 
um, in order to make you focused on a few examples, few performances that alter the moral boundaries and move the ethical dimensions. It was year 1995, when the smell of war in Balkans was still present. Last Adelimar and Croatian female artist did performance where she had only where she had only military vest over her naked body, carrying live chicken in the hand. She put the chicken on the floor and cut its head off. The audiences reacted nervously. Blasta took the military vest off and put the some on, on some ordinary female clothes. Then she started to prepare the chicken for the meal. The gesture reveals us the concept of between two deaths material and symbolical, and provoking our morality. Boris Shinsek's performance in 2002, it's also impenetrated with the post-war traumas. After he finished his art school, he joined the army and was active in the most dirty combats on the creation fields. He was declared decorated with high military rank and despite he was invited to continue his military career after the war, he came back and continued work as an artist. After a few years, when, sh when the state of emergency imposed by war was substituted with the civil common sense, the status of the war veterans changed literally over the night. There were no heroes anymore. The heavy weight of assumptions that they might violate its civil rights in the same, in the time of war, press them with the overall potentiality of guilt. Shinsek proposed performance shot, where he would face the situation which he never faced in the war and which made him something special. As a consultant curator, I understood the importance of the performance as well as the possible consequences. I suggested him to bring with him a war camera to whom he trusts and who will shoot at him. At the day of performance, he showed up alone saying, you will shoot at me, I trust you. I said that I cannot do it because that structure will completely change the reading of the performance. It will be curator shooting the artist. <clears throat> I really cared for the performance and then I found a solution in mounting the pistol in device and the mechanics are doing when the uh, um, as the mechanics are doing when they calibrate the measuring system. We did the testing, signed the positions. I approached the platform from the side and pulled the trigger, assuming responsibility for what is happening. What was, my, what was my moral status at the time when knowing that I did something completely illegal and in relation to what was my ethical imperative by then? In this case, I will take <clears throat> about an installation where two photo performances preceded the final form of exhibition. It is a work of female duo Eclipse. The topic is Slovenian political trauma called reconciliation. It is about reconciliation of the two sides that fight against each other in the Second World War. Partisans against collaborators with fascist and Nazis. The division is still paralyzing the political dynamics in our country. The girls made photo of sexual act with skeleton on the group grave of partisans where the skeleton was painted red. The other photo <coughs> was made on the grave of uh, collaborants. The skeleton was painted white. They joined the photo in a stereographic manner and they framed it in a huge golden reliquarium made out of shotgun tubes. Um, the technique is stereographic, so when you move head on one side, you saw one photo, and when you saw, when you inclined on the other side, you saw another photo. They kind of put one, uh, um, they overlaid. What we learned after the opening was that the addressed political groups remembered what over identification do, and they obviously adopted another artistic strategy as well, the aesthetic of withdrawal. The only reaction on that clearly blasphemic act was a short text in Slovenian newspaper where a soft porno kitsch aesthetics covered the meaningful message from the artist. 
the message was really simple. You can only make peace with love. Well, the journalist started his text saying, the girls are obviously joking. I will bring you another series of performances here with a slightly different background. Ivet Abar is the only radical Slovenian performer. His background is not art but medicine. However, we are collaborating since 97. These are four Tabar performances dedicated to the violent ideology that newly established state of Slovenia performed in its political reality when attempting to enter the European Union. The official ideology recreate the state of emergency in order to unify the nation in their political project. It was the same maneuver as the ruling class did, did it to separate from a previous political union, Yugoslavia, same utilitarian rhetoric, violating individual. Um, this performance was made uh, two years before we entered, but the political campaign was really, was really loud. And um, he was drinking a blue liquid. It's, it's used for a, a medicine photograph, uh, photographing to make uh, the photos more uh, contrasted. And then he pumped it um, o o with a uh, pump, which is used uh, when they pump you, uh, your stomach being poisoned or, or too drunk, for example. And he pumped it through the nose out into the, the pumps where the yellow stars were floating. The next, uh, the next performance was just before uh, we entered the European Union. Um, he did a self-mutilating act where he used a special medicine technique um, for fixating the smashed bone, where he drilled it through his bone knee, saying, I rather harm myself uh, of not being able to step into. The step into was the meme. When we entered, he did another performance when he read, ripped off his nail um, um, we, um, uh, wearing the Slovenian stem uh, on, he said, it went for a nail and, <clears throat> and fixed it on one chimera made of an in, uh, endemic uh, Slovenian uh, pr uh, animal, Proteus, and the finger made out of the um, uh, material which is using in medicine to uh, fill the bones. The last one was, um, was uh, um, a cynical comment on, uh, on the reality we're living in, where he pieced the blue liquid, the same blue liquid that was using uh, the four in the aquarium where the golden fish uh, was uh, swimming. However, he didn't piece it normally, but he, he penetrated with a needle his vesica through, through the stomach. And, and just empty the vesica into the aquarium. <clears throat> there was also a series of performances that altered the interest of the concept of bare life. It is the concept that was proposed by Foucault when developing the critique of capitalism that implemented biopolitics to control one's bare life. Foucault is saying, Politization of the bare life is a metaphysical task par excellence, where the humanity of the human is about to be decided. The fundamental categorical pair of Western politics, it's not friend, enemy, but bare life, political existence. Zoe, bios, exclusion, exclusion. The moment where the bare life became the input of the government is when the biological modernity emerged. So here we are seeing Franco B painting uh, the um, catwalk with uh, uh, bleeding from his, uh, from his uh, arms. Here is Kira O'Reilly um, um, painting on her body uh, with small um, um, cuts um, and um, using it, um, um, using blood as, um, uh, as a color. Um, this is uh, Franco B's uh, performance, Self-Obliteration, where he 
being a gay activist um, um, uh, infected by HIV virus, um, he's uh, fighting um, with the <clears throat> in his performances and criticizing uh, um, the Higginism as, I, as uh, ideology of uh, uh, white male uh, fascist, which is uh, which are uh, um, going after beauty, uh, uh, being young, successful, um, and so on. Um, this was uh, the first public uh, disclosure of a uh, necrophilic act that John Duncan made in the 80s. It was, uh, uh, I, I saw it in a, a book, uh, Out of the Present, where the collection of performances uh, from until 80s were, uh, were uh, gathered, and I thought that everybody knows about it, but it was then when um, he was talking for the first time and um, even that the whole series of performances, the explicit sexual practices as an art expression took place at midnight, it, um, the word spread and uh, we had a debate in the uh, Slovenian parliament about, about it. You maybe know the guy, Oleg Kulik, he did uh, this notorious performance white man, black dog, in, uh, uh, in our gallery as a critique of, of human pet animal abuse and a critique of anthropocentrism. There is another like really important uh, uh, work um, which is uh, of um, Dutch uh, artist Tinkebel, um, where um, uh, in her work she's um, she's caring about animals um, and uh, um, by adopting the, the strategies of over-identification, she did one piece uh, with, um, um, with the skin of her cat, which was uh, so ill that it needed to be uh, euthanized. But because she loved her so much, she didn't take it to the veterinary, but she killed uh, the cat uh, by, by herself. Well, um, I'm, I think I'm uh, uh, off time. I'm in the middle of, of my project, but I think that, uh, um, of my lecture, but I think that somehow showed uh, um, the, the profile uh, of the gallery. I will just read uh, um, the, last, um, uh, <clears throat> the last chapter, which is um, the main Agamber's proposal underlined in his book open human and animal could be read as a question. How can we think and practice the deliverance in the universe in which does not know of outside? The solution proposed by Agamben is radical turnover of the perspective. The infinity of the universe is asking from us different kind of understanding of the relationship between immanence and transcendence as it proposed by tradition and models in humanism. But what happens with ethics if the humanism as such needs to reinvent itself in order to propose an alternative to eternalization of state of emergency? It is already now and also here that we have substantial problems attempting definitions, speculative recipes, or simply avoiding talking about ethics. What happens if the humanistic dispositions of immanence and transcendence cease to exist? Even Agamben hasn't proposed a perspective on ethics with his diagonalization of the immanence transcendence oppositions. Well, I believe that exactly conferences like this where the impotence of definitions puts the ethics in the center of the U topos that is announced in Agambian propositions. It is precisely this format that makes us vaguely tackle the impossibility of strict definition what ethics is and to defend the privilege of the open structure of the concept of ethics. Thank you.